Today in our math course, our grade 9 math course, we looked at solving equations with fractions. So just wanted to create a quick video to recap some of the knowledge that uh, we acquired today. So we'll start off uh, by mentioning that first off, one of the easiest ways to solve an equation like this is to eliminate the denominator. Uh, remembering that a denominator, or, or a fraction for that matter, um, like in question A, we have one-third. So we have essentially one-third of that particular bracket 8x, sorry, 8 plus x. So what we want to do is essentially triple both sides so that the equation is still equal. However, we eliminate the fraction. So let's take a closer look. So for part A here, we do see we have a denominator of 3. The idea being that we have one-third of that bracket. So let's go ahead and let's triple the value on the right side. Notice that we're tripling it because we see di uh, 1 divided by 3. So we're going to do the opposite, which is 3 times the entire right side. Whatever we do to one side, we'll do to the other. And also, you can keep in mind that we do have an invisible denominator of 1 with these values. Okay, so keep that in mind so when we're doing some uh, canceling, that's why um, the canceling can occur. So when we look on the next, in the next step, we'll work out what we see on the left side, which is 3 times 6, or 18. On the right side, we see two fractions that are multiplying, so we multiply the tops to give us 3. Multiply the bottoms, 1 times 3 is 3, or another way we can show that is simply 1. And you'll notice that essentially what's happening is we're eliminating the denominator. So we are left with an 8 plus x in brackets. An easier way, since 1 of that bracket is equal to 8 plus x, we can actually get rid of the brackets completely. So that would probably be the most efficient way. From this point, we see that we have our variable term on the right side, but we do have constants on both sides of the equal sign. So in this case, it makes most sense to isolate the variable on the right side by eliminating the constant term positive 8. If I see positive 8, I'm thinking the opposite, which is negative 8. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, and we end up with 10 on the left side, and x on the right side. And we have solved our equation. If we sub that 10 back into the original expression, 6 equals 1 third of 8 plus x, we should get the same answer. So you should always double check your answer. And in this case, it does work out by subbing the 10 back in. The second question, very similar, just want to let you know that this expression is the same as writing 3 over 4 times z minus 5 equals 7. Okay, so it looks a little different, however, they mean the exact same thing. So in this case, we see a denominator of 4, we're dividing by 4, so once again, we're thinking multiply by 4 over 1. We'll do the same thing on the right side and we'll follow through with the math that's being asked of us. So in this case the easiest way to go about it is by actually taking our 4 and dividing by 4 and we're left with the remaining terms. In this case we're left with 3 z minus 5. On the right side 7 times 4 is 28. This question now looks familiar from what we discussed yesterday in class, which was using distribution to solve equations. So in this case, I have 3 of the bracket x minus 5. That means I have 3 z's and I have 3 negative 5's. A quick and easy way to do that is by simply multiplying both of those terms by 3. So I have a z minus 5 plus a z minus 5 plus a z minus 5, or in other words, a 3 z, that would be 3 times z, right here, and then also we're going to be looking at 3 
times negative 5, and that should give us negative 15. We're almost there. We see variable term, only one variable term, and it happens to be on the left side. Constant term on the left and on the right. So let's go ahead and leave the variables on the left. We'll get rid of our constant term. I see negative 15, so I'm adding 15 to both sides. And we're almost there. Those guys are gone. They become 0. We see 3z equals 28 plus 15, or... 43, and we can now go ahead and take that 3z equals 43 and do some division to get rid of the 3 next to the z. I see 3 times z, so I think division, and we're left with z equals, and without a calculator you can use some friendly numbers, so for example, uh, 3 times 10 is 30, so 33 would be 11, 36 would be 12, 39 would be 13, 42 would be 14, and we're left with one remainder out of 3, or 14.3 repeating. Okay, and that, that's about it, my friends. We have eliminated our fractions, we've solved two equations here, and now you have a, a resource to add to your bank for the tests, assessments, and your final exam, as well as EQAO. Good luck, and let me know if you need any help at lunchtime tomorrow.